can start. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Parenting Tips webinars from the counselors. My name is Ms. Roxana Palacios. For those who doesn't know me yet, I'm the elementary school counselor from early childhood to second grade. And Ms. Batista is also with us today. She's going to help us um, to with the Zoom and then we are, she's gonna help us also with answering some questions. And we are talking about temper tantrums and self-regulation. So what is self-regulation? What are temper tantrums? So self-regulation is a group of skills. I don't know if this is the first time that you hear about this word. Um, these skills allow all of us, not only children, to manage our thoughts our actions and emotions so we can get things done and relate to others. So that our thoughts are not too overwhelming to us and our actions are not impulsive and we are not driven by our emotions. And this is something that develops since very early and of course it needs to be age appropriate but children start learning very young how to regulate first to understand and then regulate their own feelings. So there are three types of self-regulation. The first one is impulse regulation. So the ability to wait for, if we, if we see a child waiting for their turn, waiting to speak, maybe sometimes parents are talking about something and they wanna say an opinion or express something and they need to wait to talk and also consider consequences of their actions, like think before they act. And of course it develops as they grow older the second one, and the one that we're gonna focus more on this webinar is emotional regulation, and it is to manage our anger and frustration. It's not that we're not getting angry and frustrated at all, it's once it happens to us, what do we do to cool down and be calm again? And the third one is movement regulation, and it has to do with being aware and respect our personal space, and be calm, not to be restless with our movements, like moving our hands or feet um, or fidgeting. So these are basically the three main uh, areas of self-regulation and today we're gonna focus more on emotional regulation. Okay, so what does self-regulation look like? And now I want you to think about your child or your children and how does it look like with what I just shared about self-regulation, how does it look like when they self-regulate in Zoom classes? I don't know if any of you wants to share in the chat, what does it look like for them to, you know, be self-regulated in Zoom? For example, one way would be because in Zoom we, there's so many screens and then maybe they're raising their hands and the teacher like it didn't notice it right away when it happened and to be self-regulated in Zoom is to be able to wait for their turn to speak or to share anything. Then the next one would be how does it look like in social groups when interacting with friends? Think about your child. How do they manage conflicts between friends? How do they manage frustration when they're playing with others? For example, it happened a lot in recess, like one child wants to play something and then the other wants to play something else and they need to use those self regulation skills to calm down and maybe take turns or use another solving problem skill to decide. And then the third one would be, how does it look like at their homes? So think about your child and how do you picture your child when they self-regulate at home? When they are able to wait and think before they act, not being impulsive and regulate their own emotions. Okay, so now let's see. The next please, okay. So keeping, that, keeping this in mind, the self-regulation skills, we are going to talk about temper tantrums and it's important to differentiate between temper tantrums and meltdowns. They are not the same and it is super, super important to know the difference so that we can help our children in a better way. They have two different reasons and two different approaches. 
So we're gonna go over both. So a temper tantrum is basically an outburst that happens when children are trying to get something they want or need and they can't do it at the moment. Okay, so this is developmentally appropriate when children are between two and three years old because they don't have the language skills to express their feelings, wants, or needs uh, as we do as adults. And maybe they, you know, cry or you know, throw themselves to the floor and throw a temper tantrum. And this is pretty normal between these ages. It could happen before also, and it could happen a little after, but we need to, it's a little red flag when after, I don't know, five, six years old, it continues to happen. Because what um, usually happens is that um, parents give in the temper tantrum, and somehow they learn that when they do these behaviors, they get what they want. So that keeps the behavior like happening and, and it's not that they're manip manipulating anyone, it's that they learn that this works. Okay, so, okay, how does it look like in that virtual school? So I want you to picture a first grade student that wants to participate in the Zoom class and share about her favorite toy. Her teacher notices that she's raising her hand and asks her to wait for her turn. So the child becomes impatient and upset so that she starts spouting. Her behavior then escalates and now she's crying and screaming at home. So think for a minute, what strategies would you suggest to help these parents deal with the situation at home? I'm gonna give a couple minutes so that you can share your ideas in the chat. This is a real story. <laughs> So, and I'm sure it might have had happened to, to some of you already. So what, what, what tip or what advice could you give this parent at home to deal with this situation right now? The chat is open if you have any ideas. Just a simple tip, it doesn't have to be like a, you know, like a lecture. So what could you do, or what would you do if that was your child? Okay, so Uliana mentioned change the environment, go to another room. Okay, listen to what the kid has to say. Diego, Mr. Diego Valdez, yes. Who else? And this is also very important because when you share with other parents, maybe someone else is needing some of these tips and they can, you know, listen to what has already worked to you. Listen, okay. Let's see the next. I'm gonna share some tips on how to handle a temper tantrum. And at the end, we're also gonna share more resources if you wanna go deeper into all of these strategies. First of all is they need to understand age appropriate, what is frustration? So you, have, you, you need to have a conversation with your child and this is like a prevention on what is frustration. Frustration is when you want to get something and you can't or you want something to happen and it doesn't happen the way you want it. So that feeling that is similar to anger is called frustration. So once your child is clear about what frustration is, and they can identify some signals of frustration, of frustration in themselves, of course, you need to guide them through at the beginning, you can have like a secret signal. And that signal can be like, pull your ear up or touch my shoulder or say a magic word like, I need help or something similar. You, you need to agree that with your child. And then when they start learning to identify their own frustration, they will communicate that with you with that signal and then you will know how to help. So after you do that, you can assign a calm space. In the, in the MET, we used to have the, those calm spaces in the classroom, so we're called take a break spot, but you can have your own take a break spot at home, and this is like a specific place where they feel comfortable and they can go to relax and you can have some resources there like I don't know, pillows, coloring pencils, books, or anything that works for your child to calm down on less electronics. And they know that, okay, frustration signal, then I can go to my calm space, take a break spot. And 
And it's very important to reinforce, this is not a punishment place. This is not like a timeout place. This is a, somewhere in the house where you can cool off. But it might happen that none of this work. So you can start thinking about what's causing the tantrum. You can observe like patterns. Maybe it's uh, something, they, something that they want and you have given in with the temper tantrums or even ask them uh, beforehand about the things that they consider are triggers, like something that is causing you to feel this way. What are the things that when you don't have them, like set you upset the most? And then you can have more ideas on how to act to prevent. And another strategy is to use uh, when then sentences, and this is to set clear expectations. Like when you cry like this and scream, um, then we cannot talk because I don't understand you. So when you are able to calm down and use your words to talk, then we can make an agreement or we can have a conversation. Um, of course, you adequate the language to the age of the child. One important thing to consider with temper tantrums is, with, this doesn't work all the times, but it can work most of the times, and it's to ignore the behavior you want to reduce. So if you want to reduce the outburst, then make sure that they are safe and don't pay attention to the behaviors that are negative for you or that you don't want your child to develop and praise the behavior you want to see when you see it you recognize and praise with your words and it's very useful to focus on the behavior not on them as a child because that's very confusing like very good you're a good boy or you're a good girl that is so confusing for them they, they are too young and concrete so it's more useful for them to hear something like uh, I love or it was very nice when you use your, your words to express your anger. I understood you immediately and when you do that, we can communicate. Or, um, you know, focus on the behaviors. So, what is a meltdown then? The behaviors might look very similar, but the causes are different. And a meltdown is basically... Batista a reaction to feeling overwhelmed by trying to process too much information. It can be sensorial, like information from our senses, like visual information, too many images, or too, sounds that are too loud and overwhelming for them, or sometimes textures, like there's, there's a lot of people who can't stand like specific kind of textures or creams or things that have to do with their skin um, or movement. And it, it happens in a particular situation. So what can we do to help a parent that goes through that? For, this is a true story also that happened this year. An EC3 student, not the grade level, but the story, it's true. An EC3 student joins his Zoom class, but he's not feeling well at all. He starts watching all of his classmates, and when they sing a song together, they all unmute themselves, and he becomes overwhelmed by all their faces and voices. So he moves away from the camera. He wants to avoid the stimuli. It's too overwhelming for him. And you know, the parents ask him to go back and he refuses to go back. So when his father, you know, ask him or mother, whoever, or his parent ask him to do so again, he starts crying heavily and then he had a meltdown. So what can you do in this case to support this parent? What would be your advice, or what would you do if this were your child? Let me check the chat. There's another chat from the previous, um, from the tantrums. Maybe that kid is given too much attention every time at home, which needs to be looked at. Yes, totally, that's for temper tantrums. And now for meltdowns, knowing that a meltdown is a reaction to feeling overwhelmed by sensorial information. This happens every day in my house. This, this could happen even for adults. Um, I don't know, but sometimes I have 
birthday parties on Zoom and when everyone is unmuted, I feel overwhelmed. We as adults don't throw meltdowns, but you know, it could happen. For emotional meltdown, the child can be given some space off from the Zoom call. Yes, that's very related to the tips that I'm gonna share with you later. Anybody, anyone else wants to share? This is a whole different situation and it looks the same, but it's, it's not. My daughter doesn't want to connect, she wants to continue playing. Okay, that would be a temper tantrum or a meltdown. And appreciate that they are expressive about their emotions. Yes, always, always acknowledge that they are sharing their emotions with you because that builds trust with them. Reduce the visual stimulation, yeah, totally. Deep breathing, that's amazing, amazing technique. Okay, let's see the tips. Next, please. Okay, so to handle meltdowns, it's important to consider actions that happen before the meltdown to prevent it to happen during if it actually happens and after. So before the meltdown, you need to identify the triggers. So the triggers could be uh, external stimuli, as, this, as in this case, you know, visual stimuli, too overwhelming, or sounds, or textures, or too much movement, or it could be internal too. Many children, when they are, when they have, I don't know, when they're hungry or sleepy, that could also be a trigger for the, their meltdowns because they don't really understand their emotions that they're overwhelmed and they might throw meltdowns. And then try to distract from the trigger. You can either avoid situations that, you know, involve the trigger and you, if you can't, like Zoom meetings, for example, you can prepare the child in advance and tell them like, okay, we're going to the Zoom meeting, maybe when they unmute, every, when everyone is on mute, we lower the volume of the computer, you can teach them how to do that, and it will depend on the situation. Then, but if the meltdown happens, during the meltdown, you need to do a safety assessment. Okay, how safe is environment where we are in? Um, I don't know, away from tables that are pointy or things that could be harmful, and then just give space and tone it down. Let the child, you can lower the lights and play some calm music and just be there. Not, not, you don't even have to hug them while they're throwing the, the meltdown. Just be there and assure them with a lot of patience and be super calm, and I know this is the hardest part, they just need to know that you are there. And then after they calm down, you after you give time to recover, when they calm down, they might feel ashamed. If they're not too young, they might feel embarrassed, even with you as, as parents. And after they are okay, then you find time to talk. And you know, share with them what you have observed about the possible triggers and ask them about how they feel and try to find together ways to prevent these events from happening. So, the, okay, to wrap up, tantrums are when they want something they can't have or they want something to happen away and it doesn't. So you acknowledge what your child wants I know you are very upset because you want to play right now and you can't because you need to go to the Zoom meeting, but this is not the time you can play later. So not giving because then if you give in, in that moment, you are sending the message that this works, this communication works and they will continue doing it later on. And then the meltdowns, Help your child, well, I didn't put it there, but because it, it's related to stimuli or in external or internal, you can help the, sh um, the child understand um, what affects them the most and then prevent the situations to happen. And if they happen, help them to find a safe place and be there for your child to de-escalate. So the most important thing, two, there are two very important things to keep in mind. The first one is to always, always show empathy. And it doesn't mean that you can lose it once or twice because we are humans as well, but acknowledge your child's feelings and help them put a name to those feelings. Because 
it's most of the times it's not that they want to do this and to manipulate is because they this is a way to express themselves not the best way but the way that they find in that moment and this is stop also stay calm and i want to share a quote that i love when little people are overwhelmed by big emotions it's our jobs to share our calm and not join their chaos so of course there are many um ways that we can also teach them about like breathing techniques how to breathe Sometimes you say, okay, breathe. And if you are angry, very difficult to do it. But if you find a way, there's many resources that I can share with you to change the rhythm of your breathing and teach them these strategies, they can learn how to use them when they need it. And also whatever works for them, drawing, reading a book, drinking water, moving away from the environment. So it's like a conversation with them and try to figure out what works for your child. And then since this um, week, Ms. Batista and I are sharing additional resources for you. So if you go to the counselor's website, you will find these two articles about self-regulation in young children and the difference between tantrums and meltdowns. And it's like a, like a broader, you know, information about what I shared today. So we have a couple minutes for questions. You can use the chat or you can unmute yourself and then either Ms. Batista and I will answer. Okay, let me read. I read a comment here. Acknowledge your feelings, give them a name. I know you feel, helps them feel safe and understood. Yeah, exactly that. Because if not, they feel like like lost, you know, my, I, I'm, I'm trying to express myself, it's not okay. And then what I receive from my parents is also anger and frustration. So it, it will be like, it will turn like a cycle of frustration and none, none your child or you are like moving away from that. What do you do when they don't want to do homework? This is cause of tension and conflict. The first thing I would do, because sometimes we have like cliches, like they don't want to do homework, they don't want to connect to the Zoom, and every child is so different. So I would first ask, okay, what about the homework you don't like? So is it because it's too difficult, you don't like the subject, uh, or it's because it's a time that you're supposed to play with someone else? Like that, the answers your child is gonna give you are so various that, you can find the answer with whatever situation they are, you know, um, going through. Uh, and then once you know the reason, then you can look for a strategy like, okay, it's too difficult. Okay, why is it too difficult? Maybe with this homework, I can help you. And then, uh, but there are other homeworks that are not difficult for you. So those you can do on your own or we can talk to the teacher and see how she can level your homework so that you don't feel it too challenging and then try to find a solution. Ms. Batista, I don't know if you have any idea regarding that. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking for the option to mute myself. Um, yeah, well, uh, as a, I totally agree with you, explore the, the reasons that might be behind that denial of engaging to a, a specific activity that will help you understand what is exactly going on so you can find a better solution. And as I share here in the chat, and also um, I agree with Oriana, it's that to validate, to, to give names to the feelings and validate those emotions because we cannot control or manage what we don't know what's going on, right? So validation is uh, acknowledging what's going on, what are we feeling, and that is the first step for self-regulation. And also, and also um, model, you know, they are, they are listening to you, but they are also looking at you and observing you, how you deal with your own emotions. So think about like the envir the emotional environment at your house. And I know the, um, the quarantine might be like, a, you know, a trigger for all of us. We are here at home all day long with our families. So 
take a take a moment today to think about how you deal with your own emotions and and if that has an impact or not in your child's reactions. Do you think that virtual education increases this kind of behaviors? Not always. I mean, there's a lot of kids who are having um, not the best time, but are dealing very well with um, with virtual school. So it could be a trigger, for example, for children who really enjoy playing with their friends or that physical contact and those interactions, maybe that could be a trigger. Or for someone who struggles to understand the language, or not for all, but it's an example, and they, they might find it more difficult through the computer. So it depends on the child. But yes, it could be, but not for all. There's a second part to that question, Ms. Roxana, because it says, uh -huh. Or does this happen at school too and the parents are not there to see temper tantrums? Yeah, well, may, mo, if those happen at school, probably the teacher would have left, let you know. Um, yeah. Usually when, when a child in school is having like regular temper tantrums, teachers communicate right away with you. So if this happens at school, if this happened at school, you would have known for sure. And generally, uh, sorry for interrupting, generally this doesn't happen very much at school yeah. uh, with teachers. It usually happens with parents because children know they can get away with it um, because they've, they've gotten away with it before. So it's something to pay attention to. There's another question. What to do after a tantrum if the child tells you she cannot control the emotion and just let them explode? There is, well, just by her telling you this, it's like a huge step for her. If she, there's kids that don't even notice, like they are throwing the temper tantrums and they're totally unaware of what's going on inside. And the fact that she's been able to trust you and tell you that she's struggling with this is the first step already. So then uh, I would suggest to start working on her emotions, first of all, like what are the emotions? Like being aware of what are the different types of emotions? Because usually it's like, I feel good, I feel bad, and we don't really understand sadness, frustration, anger, fear. And then um, after that, find triggers. Like, okay, what are possible triggers for your anger or your frustration, that the emotion that, that bothers you the most, that is more difficult for you to control or regulate? And then look for strategies that work for her. And it's like trial and error. Um, and you can share the things that work for you, for example. And we do that in school too. When we introduce the take a break spot in the classrooms, we share like, you know, when I'm upset, I call my best friend or I go and drink some water and they, they don't feel like, um, you know, weird or that they don't belong because they know that it happens to us as well, to adults. And we naturally or with support learn through the years how to manage and deal with our own emotions. So let them know this is fine. Uh, you can say, I'm very grateful for you to, for sharing this, this with me and let's work together. And if it's very hard for you at home because you are working or, you know, things going on, you can always contact us, uh, the counselors, and we can help you with that process. I would like to add to that, Roxana, uh, that you can also ask her, well, what do you need from me? Like, how can I help you when you're going through a difficult emotion? What can I do uh, to make you feel, to, to, to help you feel better? I know, I know that we need to teach them that emotions are, you know, our responsibility, but also sometimes we need help from others. So ask her what uh, would she need from you when she gets, uh, when she experiences these emotions. So you can also have a more, you know, Control idea of how, what to do when 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 they're going through this situation. Yes, so Juliana said there is a very cool device for kids called Sanimal. It's a gadget that they can use to learn to meditate or take quiet time. It's guided and has music. It helps us immediately puts her in a calmer state. Also, if you go to the to the counselor's website and you scroll down, you can find some resources for, you know, breathing techniques and meditation techniques for children, which also helps a lot. 
mindfulness techniques for children. So our time is over. Thank you very much for joining us today. Next week, we're going to Upper Elementary and we'll see each other again in two weeks. So I don't know if Ms. Manzanares wants to say something. Before we no, leave. just thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are happy to see all of you. And please join us next Thursday for uh, another webinar for upper, our upper elementary students. Um, so thank you.